Another great example of how we can use nuclear physics uh, is to find the age of, let's say, a moon rock. And over the years, we've brought back almost 850 pounds of moon rocks to be analyzed to find out more about the moon. And let's say we had a moon rock and it was chemically analyzed to contain some rubidium and some strontium. And it turns out that rubidium is a radioactive element. It undergoes beta decay. It has a half-life, a very long half-life of 47.5 billion years. So it's very, very, very slowly decays from rubidium into strontium uh, through beta decay. So one of the neutrons turns into a, a proton. And if they, when they chemically analyzed this particular rock, they found that it contained about 1.82 times 10 to the 10th atoms of rubidium and 1.07 times 10 to the 9th atoms of strontium. And the assumption was made that there was no strontium in that rock when the rock was first formed. And then once the rock was formed and everything was locked in, as the rubidium began to decay, whatever strontium was formed was uh, formed from the moment the rock uh, was formed. All right. Assuming that, let's find out if we can find the age of the rock. So first we need to figure out how many total rubidium atoms were there to begin with. And of course, the initial number, N initial, is going to be the total of the rubidium that's left plus the rubidium that has changed into strontium. So that's going to be 1.82 times 10 to the 10th plus 1.07 times 10 to the 9th. And if we add that together, we get uh, 1.927, um, uh, 927 times 10 to the 10th. Uh, because what we do here is we just move this over by one decimal point. We get 107 like that. And when we add it, we get 1.927. All right, so that works. So that's the total number of initial rubidium atoms. And those have now decayed into strontium. So let's now find out what the percentage had that has decayed. So we're going to take a ratio, the ratio of the, uh, the ratio of the final amount, the ratio of the final amount is equal to the final number divided by the initial number. And if I write initial so you can read it, read it that would help. Initial number n, so that would be the final number would be uh, how much we have left, 1.82 times 10 to the 10th, and how much we started which was 1.927 times 10 to the 10th, and that will give us the amount that's left by finding that ratio. Okay, so 1.82, whoop, 1.82 divided by 1.927 equals, and so we'll have 0. 94447, uh, that would be the amount left from the original rubidium that was there, amount left. Okay, so now we, now we can plug that into our equation that we're familiar with, that n as a function of time is equal to n sub naught times e to the minus lambda times t. And of course, the amount that we have left as relative to the initial amount would be 0 0.94447 of the original amount equals the original amount times e to the minus lambda t. Of course, we're trying to find out what t is equal to, but before we can do that, we also need to figure out what lambda is, the decay constant. So we still have to find a decay constant. Decay constant is equal to 0 0.693 divided by the half-life and we have the half-life in terms of years, so this is equal to 0 0.693 divided by 4.75 times 10 to the 10th uh, years. Okay, so 0 0.693 divided by 4.75 e to the 10th, and that gives us 1.459 times 10 to the minus 11 per year. So now that we have the decay constant, we can come back over here and plug that in here. So we have, uh, and also the, um, the ends of knots cancel out. So we have 0 0.94447 is equal to e to the minus the decay constant, which is one point. You know what? I think it's easier before these numbers all become very big. Why don't we just solve for t first and then plug that in for the decay constant? That's probably an easier thing to do. So let's take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of 0 0.94447 is equal to the natural log of e to the minus lambda times t. And of course, this will negate that, and we'll get the natural log of 0 
is equal to minus lambda times t. And if you solve this for t, we get t is equal to this divided by a negative lambda. So t is equal to the natural log of zero point, and that's uh, not a very good looking natural log. Let's write that again, the natural log of zero point nine four 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 seven divided by minus lambda. Right, if I take the minus lambda, put it up here, and then turn the equation around, I get that. Now let me plug in what lambda is equal to. So that's equal to the natural log of 0 0.94447 divided by a 1, whoop, a minus, don't forget the minus, minus 1.459 times 10 to the minus 11 uh, per year, and that'll give us time in years. Okay, so take the inverse of that. And then multiply that times uh, 0.94447, take the natural log, equals, and the minus, and time is equal to 3.916 billion years. And that's how we were able to date some of those moon rocks that we brought back. Of course, considering only if it had rubidium and strontium in them, but if it did, then we took the assumptions to be correct, then we were able to date the age of the, the rock. So pretty interesting application of nuclear physics.